long been the dream of, I think, every auto journalist to get an absolute stripper of a 911. That is <laughs> to order the base model with no options at all. And I have almost achieved that in this test ride. It's a Carrera T, which is like already the stripped down version okay. of, the, of the 911. Um, it only has the essentials, the things you need, like a short throw shifter. And it has almost no options on it. I absolutely love it. Um, with one exception, and that is the color. I love the color. You look great in it. I don't know, Matt. You probably can't see it, but maybe you've seen. The color is called Ruby Star Neo. It's like a purple pink, like a Barbie pink. Um, I mean, it's the best color. You got the best color, and you're complaining about it. My daughter thinks so as well. But give me your, your thoughts first off on the Carrera T, the 911 Carrera T. It's great. I mean, I, I think what Porsche has done is realized that as with a lot of things in life, the more options, the better, and the more money they can get. And, you know, for an enthusiast, I am not likely to buy a 911 Turbo. It's a little pricey. But if I'm in a 911 range, they have created something that fits between the true base Carrera and the Carrera S, and they call it the Carrera T. And somehow, by creating a cheaper version of the Carrera S, they've made it more desirable than a Carrera S. They are selling at, at pretty high levels for people I've spoken to. And the problem is, even though it's the stripper version, it's a little bit faster than the base Carrera. Um, I model, I, I did one myself. I built one before the show. And I was like, oh, you know, it starts at 130. That's such a great price. I'm only going to add a couple of options. And you get on the Porsche <laughs> personalization page and you're like, well, I need Harderberg yellow uh, seat belts. I definitely need to have the special brown. I like it in brown, the special brown color. I need this. I need that. And then all of a sudden, it's uh, you're uh, you're one hundred and forty thousand dollars into a car. So it's genius. I think it's genius. You got it with the manual. Who cares what color it is? As long as it has a manual, that is the right car to get. Well, and that's the beauty of this. So the base model Carrera, the absolute cheapest one you could get, doesn't have the manual as an option. You have really? to get the PDK. Oh, please. Which is a very amazing automatic transmission, but it's still an automatic transmission. And Matt, the, the benefit that the, the T has over the Carrera S, I was talking Luke, with Luke Van de Zandy, um, you know, who runs PR for uh, the 911 at Porsche in the US. He told me, you can't get the short throw shifter on the S. You have to go up a level to the GTS to get that. And that, to me, has been the revelation with this car. You know, I had a Carrera S, a 991 Carrera S. Sure. And I, I had never thought about changing out the stick. This little stick is so much better than the big stick. I don't like a big stick. I like a little <laughs> stick. Who does? You know? I, the other revelation for me with this car is the cloth seats are amazing. I've never preferred cloth over leather. And these are just, I'd rather have them. So... I feel like uh, it's an opportunity for Paul Sweeney to get a new car and save a little bit of money because he's not buying the Turbo S. 100%. It's a great deal, Paul. I, All right. I think you, you would be silly not to buy it at this point. <laughs> hey, Matt, how about you're, you like Matt are a car guy, and you're at the high end here. I can't imagine the Ferraris, the Lamborghinis, the Porsches of the world, they are going electric willingly. Are they scratching and clawing to remain in the ice world? No. If you look at, especially in Germany, there's been a big push with the EU regulations coming up. Uh, the theoretically, that in a decade, you know, we're going to have to have essentially no gas-powered uh, cars. To get that legislation through Brussels, basically the Germans said, uh, specifically Porsche and Volkswagen said, you know what, e-fuels, give us an exception for carbon-neutral e-fuels, because no matter what, even if they build electric cars, even if they sell primarily electric cars, no one I've talked to at Ferrari, no one I've talked to at Porsche has given up on a, on a gas-powered car, because for a sports car, even though an electric car might be faster, nothing just sounds quite, exactly. and I love driving electric sports cars, nothing sounds right. You don't get that feel of a short-throw shifter. Like, you, you need that visceral reaction because that's what you're paying for you're not paying to get somewhere faster you're paying to get somewhere with more excitement with more joy that's uh this car definitely fits that bill i mean it isn't the fastest car on the road um it doesn't feel as quick as my carrera s and it doesn't have as much horsepower it's 379 horsepower um you know my carrera had i think 400 and now the carrera s has probably 430 um but it's got that build up it's got that uh you know, the gradual um, acceleration and the sound from the sport exhaust is just amazing that I absolutely love. Plus, it only weighs like 3,100 pounds. So that's incredibly light. By the way, maybe you can help 
Paul out with his conundrum. Um, veering away from the 911 for a moment. He has the last manual 5 series. He has the 2014 535i uh, with a stick. And now he's worried that it's going to start getting old and he's going to have to make repairs. Um, should he get something else or should he just make the repairs and keep the car that he loves the most? He should get rid of it and give it to me because I have a I have a 2003 5 series 530i with the 5 speed. And it has 235,000 wow. miles on it. 235,000 miles. 235. The, the, look, it's 2014. It's a little sketchy. You're, you're, you're on the edge where the car is so modern that sometimes fixing things becomes cost prohibitive. Yep. Um, but you're just on the right side of the edge. I think I think you can make this car last. And it's not like mine. Mine is like Legos. You can pop something out. You can pop something in. And you can generally <laughs> fix the car. Your car isn't Legos. Unfortunately, it's tech, Lego Technic. It's a little bit more advanced. But... No, you're never going to find, this is the problem. You're never going to find something new that feels as good as that car because they can't make cars like that anymore. So either put it on, bring a trailer and regret it for the rest of your life or, you know, spend two or $3,000 a year with your mechanic getting it. I, I, I think that's the best move. Got to keep the wow. car or give it to me. Also, <laughs> or give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. That could be an option. 